You are listening to the Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Extension Hour. This is Amy Ressler. I'm County Extension Agent, Family and Community Health, and I have some lovely ladies in the studio with me today. Can we call you guys the Veggie Ladies? Oh, sure. Thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So they are master gardeners and they do work in the vegetable area. And so we're going to talk a lot with them today about um, things that they do and some exciting things that are coming up for the master gardeners, plant sale and classes. Um, But this is the extension hour. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the other stuff that we have going on. Um, And I'm going to start with family and community health today. So um, we've been really busy doing some mobile cooking schools. Um, and that's uh, the classes that we do in the community for, um, it's, it's usually open to the public. We have a host that um, have us come out. So we've been at the Academy for Lifelong Learning, both the one in Montgomery Woodlands and one in uh, New Caney. And then we've also been at um, Sam Houston Elementary working with their parents. So um, it's a, it's like a, a hands-on cooking class that we do. So we bring out all the equipment, all the food, and uh, we make a meal and we sit down and eat it together. So it's, it's very fun, very yummy. Um, so anybody who's interested in hosting those uh, mobile cooking schools, we're always looking for host for that. And then um, our Families Reading Every Day project has just kicked off at our Head Starts. And so we call that FRED for short because it's fun to say FRED and because it's a really uh, great program. And then we also have our Walk Across Texas that are coming up soon. Um, so that's, we'll start on or about April 1st. And the nice thing this year is April 1st is actually a Monday. So that makes a really good day for teams to start. And we've had Master Gardener teams before. Because the cool thing about um, Walk Across Texas is really getting people to be more physically active. And um, it doesn't necessarily have to be just walking. It can be other types of activities. So gardening definitely counts because it can be kind of physically strenuous, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. true. Um, and then uh, so that, like I said, April, on or about April 1st. Um, so you can contact us at the Extension Office for more information. Um, there's also walkacrosstexas.tamu.edu. And that also has a link to the new registration site. So it's been redone. Um, hopefully easier. It's very mobile friendly for people to put in their miles um, and people can put in their miles individually instead of um, relying on a team captain to do that for them. And that uh, registration site is called Howdy Health. So, uh, you know, how the, the Aggies, they say howdy a lot and um, health because it's, so it's, right now it's mostly just walk across Texas, but it'll have some other um, health components to it as well. So howdyhealth.org. And uh, Kids Fest will be coming up. You guys will be out there as well um, at the Discovery Village. Um, I'll be in the Health Village. Jenny, our um, coordinator for Family and Community Health, will be doing the Safety Village. So Extension is out there a lot. Um, So that is April 27th. That's in downtown Conroe. Um, It starts like at 10 and goes till about 5 that day. So it's a nice, nice long day. But everything is totally free. And that's the, the really cool thing about that. Um, and then one other thing I want to mention before I get into introducing um, my guest today and is uh, our Texas Community Futures Forum is one of the things that we do in Extension. And this relates to all of Extension, not just um, family and community health. But um, so when we decide what kind of programming we're doing and why we focus on different areas that we focus on, we r- rely very heavily on um, advice that we get from committee members and um, community members because they're out in the community and see the needs, whereas, um, you know, we can't be in all parts of uh, Montgomery County. So the Texas Community Futures Forum is actually our long-range strategic planning process um, where we look down the road, three to five years, what are going to be the important things that Montgomery County needs to address, and um, we'll work on developing uh, educational programs um, to address those needs that are identified. So uh, May 7th, we'll have an open forum, and we are inviting a variety of community members to be there. So saying all that, um, the Texas Community Futures Forum, we're looking in the future, but right now we stay really busy. We've got lots of stuff going on and um, some of the things that are happening are with our master gardeners. And so, like I said, we've got these three lovely ladies here. Um, We'll start with you, Mary, because I'm looking at you right now. So go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Okay. Well, I'm Mary Decker and I've been a master gardener for six years. Um, my specialty is growing vegetables at the extension. Mm-hmm. Um, we have about 30 beds where we are more or less 30 beds uh, where we grow different vegetables. We grow every season of the year. Um, we have trials where we test different vegetables so we can recommend varieties. 
um, to everyone here in the county. Um, along with growing vegetables, I also help with irrigation. I help maintain um, a greenhouse at a school here in Montgomery County, so I try to learn a lot about running greenhouses. And then I teach a lot in the community through the Junior Master Gardening Program in schools in Montgomery County as well. That's awesome. You say you busy, busy. So, and a couple of things that you mentioned. So the, the demonstration gardens that we have there at the office are just awesome because they are really good examples of what works well. And then you also take it out into the community and, and uh, show other people in different places um, within the county yes. um, what to do. And, and the kid work is really great too, working with the, the youth through Junior Master Gardener. Okay, Linda Blanky, 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 Blanky. And I, you know, I asked you ahead of time and then I just flubbed it up again. Oh, yeah, not anyway. the first one to get it wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so Linda, a, tell us about you. I've been a master gardener for about 14 years and uh, my background is nursing. I was a, a registered nurse, but since I've retired, I'm, I'm able to, to get a lot more involved in being a master gardener. So, of course, we all work in vegetables and as a team leader, I think I have five beds that. Uh, as the seasons change, we will change what we're growing there. And so it's always kind of fun when at the end, beginning of a new season, when you're starting new things and you're getting things in the ground and we have interns that rotate through. So we will, uh, educating the, the interns is, is a big part of what we do. Yeah. So um, we, we have our work day is every Wednesday. And then we also have uh, speeches and talks that are given throughout the year, mostly in the beginning of each season, like right before fall and right before spring. Great. All right. And then the legendary Lynn Shaw. <laughs> I don't know which legend, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Lynn Shaw. Uh, I'm a co-manager of the vegetable area. I've been a master gardener for 10 years, and uh, I'm also involved in some of the junior master gardener programs. I do square foot gardening at the schools, uh, butterflies. And oversee the gardens of what we're planting and help manage, you know, what we're going to plant, when we're going to plant it, and uh, get the privilege of working with these lovely ladies. Awesome. Yeah, like I said, I think that it's just, it's great to have um, the, the opportunity to, for people to come actually see what's happening. Because you can talk all day mm -hmm. <laughs> about, you know, what should work or what could work, or, but, but actually being able to put your, your eyes and your hands on um, those types of uh, uh, plants and whatever it is. So we're, we're talking about vegetables today. That's our focus in the vegetable garden. But there are several areas out there. So um, we're not going to talk about any of the others today because vegetables are the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, and which I think, too, with uh, family and community health, I mean, one of the things that we tell people, you know, if you do nothing else to, to become more healthy, eating more vegetables and becoming more physically active, that, that'll take care of a lot of your health mm -hmm. issues. And so... Um, being able to, to grow those um, yourself also is a, is a great um, opportunity to have. So uh, some of the things that are coming up with you guys, <clears throat> class tomorrow, right? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be all about vegetables. And then the, uh, the uh, plant, plant sale, sale is coming up on the 23rd, too. That's right. So tell us about the class, what's happening uh, tomorrow, Saturday. Well, I'll, I'll take that one. Okay. Um, basically, we're going to do two classes back to back. The first class is about uh, vegetables, what grows well here, all the different varieties. Uh, and we're going to just talk about kind of vegetable 101. When do you plant? How do you plant? What your soil should be? Uh, and, and all the different things that grow well here in Montgomery County. I, I like the title, too. Honing in on your spring vegetable bounty. <laughs> yes. You're yes. going to help them have a bountiful yeah, the, supply. The whole, whole <laughs> purpose, I guess, is to have enough to eat, right? Right, there you go. <laughs> and so that that's what we'll focus on, because there's some things you can grow that, you know, you won't get much from it, and is it worth it? You know, you can buy it at the grocery store. You don't have to grow it yourself. But, yeah. but what you want to do is grow stuff that is valuable and that you'll get enough that uh, maybe it's cheaper to grow your own food than to buy it at the grocery store, and it for sure tastes a lot better. Oh, no yeah. About and so in the... Uh, Throughout the show, we're going to talk, give people some ideas of what they can do now. So definitely you can come to the class yeah. tomorrow and learn all kinds of things, but you can just listen in for the rest of this extension hour and you'll learn some really important tips so as the, well. The second class is mm -hmm. even more exciting because uh, if you haven't been to a vegetable class, this is one you probably want to go to because it, it's going to be more hands-on. We're going to teach people about seeds, how long seeds last, how to plant seeds. 
Uh, we're going to talk about propagation, how to bump up plants, and I think there's even going to be a little hands-on uh, okay. bumping up uh, some plants to show people what do you look at, look for when you pull out the plant and look at the roots. What should they look like, and things like that. So oh, okay. it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. Right, and then that one is called the best ways to start your vegetables growing. Right. All right. So the first one is eight to ten. The second one is ten thirty to twelve thirty. Uh, people can come to either or or both. Right. So it's five dollars for one or eight dollars for both. both. Yes, and that is at um, the extension office. So that's at ninety twenty Airport Road. Um, do people need to uh, RSVP? Let no. them know you're coming. All right. No, so if they just want to, up. yep, mm-hmm. wake up and say, I want to learn about vegetables. <laughs> right. They can just come on down to come the extension down. office and um, we'll teach them about the bounty and growing. So eight to ten and ten thirty to twelve thirty. All right. So, and then um, the plant sale is coming up um, on the 23rd, right? So that's, you do a little presentation to begin with. Eight um, to nine. Eight to nine. And what does that usually cover, Mary? Well, usually that covers uh, basically everything we're growing. So it could be vegetables, herbs, trees, flowers. It's just a big overview. Okay. And lots of times the extension agent will give the presentation and he will focus on varieties that he suggests as well. Okay, so that's Michael Potter. He's our horticulture yes. agent, yeah. Yes. Um, and so the presentation, 8 to uh, ten, 9, and then 9 to noon is a, is a free-for-all, right? Go get that <laughs> <Right>. one cucumber. <laughs> Bring your wagon. Bring your own wagon, we, we advise. That is helpful, <laughs> yes. There, there's some out there, so if you yes. forget, it's not, it's not horrible. But, yeah, definitely having your own wagon, you're guaranteed to be able to load up that's and right. take yeah. lots of stuff yeah. home. Okay, so um, like I said, in the rest of the show, we're also we're going to uh, talk about um, some of the things that you guys talk about in classes and some of the things that people need to know about um, growing vegetables. But we're going to take a little break before we do that. Um, but I would also remind everyone that um, we're here every Friday, 1 to 2. Um, it is the extension hour. We have different guests that come in each time. But um, love having the Master Gardeners because you guys are just so knowledgeable. Um, so this is Amy Ressler, and I'm County Extension Agent for Family and Community Health. You're listening to the extension hour on IRLoneStar.com, that's worldwide. You can listen to it anywhere. We podcast. We uh, You can go back and look at them later, and it's on Facebook Live. So, hey, everybody. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking. We're going to go to a break. Be right back. Family and community health programs provide science-based education designed to improve the overall health and wellness of individuals, families, and communities. Developed by experts and delivered locally. Topics include child and adult health, nutrition, child care, financial management, passenger and community safety, and building strong families. All encouraging lifelong health and well-being for every person, every family, and every community. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. Helping Texans make their lives better. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? Reach the hyper-local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out IRLoneStar.com slash sponsor for more information. Or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776 with your questions. Get seen on TV, YouTube, and heard on our podcast, FM, and internet radio. Support your local radio station with Lone Star Community Radio. Are you interested in learning more about preparing quick, healthy, and safe meals for your family? Would you like to spend time with others learning tips and tricks, along with practicing and tasting nutritious food? If so, the On the Road to Healthy Living Mobile Cooking School is for you. Call Amy Ressler at Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service at 936 936- 539-7825 to find a class near you or volunteer to host a class. This is Rick TRC. Every Tuesday on my show, Afternoons with Lone Star from 3 to 7, I play back-to-back classic rock hits. That's right. I like to call it a two for Tuesday or a three for whatever it is you'd like. Call the request line, 936 647 Three seven seven six, or message me on Facebook. Afternoons with Lone Star. Make a music request. That's right. You can do it. Here's what else. Go over to our website, irlonestar.com. Get the app on your phone. It's easy. You'll like it. <laughs>
And we are back with our three lovely ladies. You guys are like peas in a pod, huh? Like, because they were the vegetable <laughs> ladies. Um, we are, uh, this is Extension Hour, and we're talking, you know, what we do in the Extension Hour is we talk about our people, our programs, and our partnerships. And I feel like our master gardeners are our people. So, um, you guys, we've got a really close relationship working together with Extension. Um, you guys are, are kind of an extension of our Extension service. Yeah. Um, and then so many programs that you do, so many great things that you teach. And then you guys have a lot of great partnerships out in the communities um, as well. So um, another thing I want to talk about is the 4-H program. Uh, let me mention a few little things that are coming up. So um, if, you, uh, if you're not going to the uh, uh, classes or even after the classes, so there's the, the 4-H Angels Rodeo is happening uh, tomorrow yeah, I'm, I'm March 10th, and I'm kind of getting confused on my dates because I've got one that says March 10th and one that says uh, March 9th. So, oh, yeah, maybe it is Sunday. So it's two different days. Angels Rodeo is on Saturday. Sunday. Sorry, confusing people. Um, so for each Angels Rodeo, it's for special needs. Um, so they get the opportunity to do ro rodeo events. Um, there's lots of volunteers that are out there um, to help. So that's 2 to 4.30, and that is out at the um, fairgrounds. And then um, on March 14th is actually 4-H Day at the Capitol in Austin. So a lot of our 4-H members from Montgomery County and from other counties will be at the Capitol. Um, actually, we've got four kids here from Montgomery County that are going. Um, so they, they get a chance to experience, um, you know, our state legislature in, in action. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, again, another thing they have is a photo shoot that's happening uh, for STEM activities. So um, science, technology, engineering, and math, the STEM. And uh, that's uh, on March 9th. Uh, sorry, March 16th. <laughs> and then on March 19th, they have County Roundup, which is um, some of the uh, contests that they participate in. And this is actually a really good opportunity too, even for uh, people who are kind of interested in 4-H, they can come, uh, they have some things just on display. So you don't necessarily have to be a 4-H member, but if you're kind of thinking about it, this is a great time to just kind of look, you know, what what is kind of 4-H about, you get to see it in action. And that's um, three to seven. Uh, and that will be also at the extension office. So our extension office, again, is at 9020 Airport Road. We're right across the street from the Lone Star Convention Center. Um, and then on March 26, they'll have the STEAM night. So STEAM is like STEM, except we add arts in there. So um, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And they um, that it'll have um, this one, the theme will be a math, a math task to address where to grow as, a popula as the population doubles by 2050. Um, so, you know, our 4-H kids are helping, they're going to be our future, so they're already helping to solve problems that'll come up in the future. And of course, the Montgomery County Fair is coming up starting March 29th, it goes through April uh, 7th. We have lots of 4-H members out there, lots, you know, lots of county folks. Um, you guys, you you guys are out there too, right? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. So, wh what can people look for at uh, the fair with you? Well, the Junior Master Gardening mm -hmm. Group of the Master Gardeners will be there on April 1st and 2nd, mm -hmm. and we are just going to do an activity with children from the schools that come in on those two days, because those are school days at the mm -hmm. fair, Right. and we will be doing a little talk on seeds and planting seeds with oh, the children. That's awesome. And then, so that on those kids' days, too, um, we'll be out there as well. Um, so I have this alter ego. She's, she's named Chef Plate, and she's like this cross between a rodeo clown and rainbow bright, <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, teaching kids about nutrition. So we talk about My Plate, USDA's My Plate Nutrition um, Guide. And so Chef Plate talks about My Plate. And um, I sing and dance and chop, chop vegetables. And <laughs> talk about, I love vegetables. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of fun. So we're out there for Kids Day <laughs> as well. Um, so yes, and oh, another thing that I was going to mention about 4-H and also related to Master Gardeners is that the Master Gardeners actually have a scholarship available for um, any youth. So any... Um, senior, high school senior who's interested in a career in agriculture, they can apply for a um, scholarship. And then there's also another one that's offered by uh, the Grounds Maintenance Conference, and that's for anyone who's interested in a career in agriculture. And the interesting thing about both of those is you do not have to be a 4-H member to apply for those scholarships. It's just available for youth. And then there's other scholarships um, that are obviously for 4-H uh, members. So there's the Montgomery County 4-H Scholarship, there's the 4-H Horse Project Scholarship, and then our Texas Extension Association um, also offers scholarships for kids. So um, lots of uh, um, opportunities for that. So if anyone is interested in a 4-H scholarship and applying for that, um, you can contact Jennifer Dirks at our office. And so 936-539-7825 is, is one of the numbers, and I always hesitate when I say that because we've got several. 
Um, cause uh, if you call the master gardener phone room, it's like nine, three, six, five, three, nine, seven, eight, two, 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 four, two, four, so, two, four. <laughs> so anyway, like two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, you'll get the extension office. <laughs> okay. So before the break, we were talking about, um, the plant sale coming up. We were also talking about, uh, the class, um, it, but we were going to also mention that there's lots of things to learn without even going to the class. And Linda, you had mentioned in the break too, you want to talk about, uh, propagation and some of the things that are related to that. Right. I was going to talk about propagation. And I also wanted to mention that just after you become a master gardener, the learning really doesn't stop there at all. It just mm. begins, actually, because there's a lot of specialist courses that you can take at other master gardener counties within Texas. Uh, there's a vegetable specialist course that I think uh, some of us have taken. And uh, there's propagation course. Uh, you can be a propagation specialist. Uh, there's irrigation. There's greenhouse specialists, so rainwater harvesting. There's lots of different ways that you can expand on your on, on your knowledge of growing vegetables. Right. So to become a master gardener, you have to go through an internship, and yes. that's a pretty intensive, um, what is it, eight weeks? Uh, it's about eight weeks. Um, twice a class. week. Twice a week. Yeah, class, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have to do um, some, so some payback time, so some volunteer times. But then you can really hone in on um, specific things that you want to learn more about. So the, the intern class is just kind of a general overview of everything, but then you can kind of choose some specialties. And the intern class is really interesting too, I found, because it's taught by a lot of the professors from A&M, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have written books, and they bring their books, and they'll sign it for you. And so the whole it, the whole experience is just really, really fun, and I think our all of our interns have really enjoyed it, yeah. from what I can tell. So uh, Potter was telling me that there is over, with the master, with the intern class now, there's over 400 master gardeners. That's correct. Mm -hmm. yes. So, and, and that's like, like kind of doubled in the last five or so it's doubled, years? It's doubled since I started master gardener. So that, yeah. that is awesome. And that's a testament to the great work that you guys do. Okay, so uh, what else do we want to talk about? With the class coming up, vegetables. I mean, you, there's so many things yeah. about vegetables. Plant sale, you guys were telling me best seller is? Tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Why tomatoes. do people like tomatoes? We got 14 varieties <laughs> of tomatoes because you usually get more than one. Uh, and they taste so much better when you grow them yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's, yeah, it's awesome to be able to just go pick it and eat it, eat right, it. right there in the garden. <laughs> a lot of times, the yeah. cherry tomatoes especially. All right. So what do people yeah. want to look for? Oh, you know what else we were going to mention? Um, you, you had a little teaser in the first one. You were talking about bumping up plants. What, <laughs> yes. what, the, what the heck? <laughs> You're making it make me. That was a teaser. That was to get people there. Yeah. So, right? so I want to know. Yeah. Bump, I'm, <laughs> I, Bumping up is taking a, a little small pot, turning it over, bumping the back of it. Okay. <laughs> and then putting it in a bigger pot so it'll grow bigger. So you bump it to kind of like loosen up those roots. Loosen right? up the because roots you don't want and get it to continue to grow. Okay. So yeah. what else do you have to do b before that? So to make sure your land, your, your ground, whatever, is ready. We were talking uh, before we even started, this crazy weather has really yeah. put kind of a kink in plans mm -hmm. for gardening. So tell us a little bit more about what do people need to think about when they're going to plant some vegetables. Well, <laughs> typically by now we have already planted our tomatoes in the ground. Mm -hmm. But because we had a freeze last week, this has put us back. And we're not able to get them in the ground till probably this coming week. Mm -hmm. But we also have plants in the greenhouse and with lack of sunshine, and warmth, they don't grow as quickly either. So we're hoping that days ahead are going to bring us some warmth and some sunshine so that we can get our plants in the ground and get the plants in the greenhouse growing quicker. So if someone had already put their plants in the ground, they, they, what, what do they look for? I mean, if well, hopefully they protected them, okay. you know, by putting some row cover or some freeze protection over them mm -hmm. uh, because that freeze would have killed almost anything that you would normally plant this time of year, which would be your tomatoes, your peppers, your cucumbers, your squash, all of those are, are not freeze hardy. Um, but the one thing that they can be doing right now, and which we have been doing at the extension, is to prepare their beds so that when their plants are ready to go in the ground, their your beds are ready to accept them. And we do that by turning the beds, getting rid of all the weeds from the winter, uh, adding fertilizer at least a week before you plant. Two weeks might even be better, and it gets the soil ready to accept accept the plants. Uh, and so that's what we've been doing the last couple couple of weeks is getting the beds ready. So the minute we see a window of about ten days, which we're getting close, mm -hmm. uh, with no freeze and uh, uh, 
rain is okay as long as it's not every day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we see some sunshine. That would really help plants get established better before you put them in. So we're almost ready. We, we hope this week will be will be our planting date for most of our tomatoes. Okay, so it freezed. What night was that? To, to Wednesday Monday, night? Monday, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So Monday, you, and Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday, yeah. So you say you start counting from there, and you're looking for mm-hmm. 10 days of sunshine or no with, freeze. without freeze. Yeah. So with, it's a, what if it's just cold, like 35, 36? That's too cold. Okay. So we, we want to, <laughs> they wouldn't to, like that. Ten days was well, too too cold to plant, or to start counting those ten days. Well, it, it's too cold to plant. Okay. And you also want the temperatures to be because you got to get the ground warm. And mm-hmm. so once you've had a freeze, your ground has gotten cold. At least the the top layer has. Mm-hmm. So you're you're wanting to have you know, fifty degrees at least mm-hmm. for a few days. Seventies even nicer, like it is today. Mm-hmm. Because uh, that's going to warm up your ground real fast, and once the ground is warmed up enough, then you can you can plant easily, and you know it'll survive. Okay, and then, and then is there a point where it's too, you wait too long to plant? Oh yes. Oh yeah, that's the problem here in Texas. We have such a short season <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, before it gets too hot, and once it gets too hot, as a lot of people know, the tomatoes don't really set anymore. So that's why we sometimes we'll jump the gun, put those plants in the ground when it's really kind of too soon. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's a chance you take and, and it usually pays off because a lot of times our our average freeze date, I think is March 15th or something like that, the last freeze of the year. So hopefully we're in that window now. So the sooner you get those plants in the ground, the sooner you'll have tomatoes and or peppers or, or whatever. Although there's really no hurry for peppers. They really like it, the ground to be a little bit warmer. Okay, so you want to yeah. plant the, pe- the tomatoes first. Peppers can be planted later. They can wait a little yeah. while. All right, so ground warms up, you're going to bump your tomato plant, you know, bump it up, and then what do you, what do, you do then? And we plant. Okay, yeah. so you uh-huh. just we dig you holes. Make, make a little hole <laughs> and you stick it in there. Yeah, now yeah. one of the things we do at the extension, which is kind of interesting if, if you've never done it before, is when we plant tomatoes, we'll plant them sideways. And what that does is, and you, and you pinch off the bottom leaves, so your tomato might only have some leaves right on the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the bottom leaves have been pinched off, and you plant it sideways in the ground. So you just kind of lay it down. Yeah, you okay. lay it horizontally. Vert- vert- horizontally. Horizontally. Yeah, very good. <laughs> uh, so that you get a uh, mass uh, of roots on that stem that's laying down, and that gives that plant a lot more structure, and, and it'll get more vitamins and, and take in the fertilizer better. It does a whole lot of really good stuff for it, and it stabilizes the plant, too. Um, so that's one of the methods we use to, to grow our tomatoes and show, show the interns as well as anybody else that comes by the extension how to grow them that way. So the tomato plants grow better from a plant as opposed to a seed? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to start them with a seed. But you, you guys start plants from the seeds in the greenhouse? In the greenhouse. So that you've got them ready. Right. Okay. right. Yeah, if you have a greenhouse, that's ideal. We, we start all of our plants. We don't buy any plants. We start all of our plants from seeds, no matter what it is we're growing. Vegetables. And because we have a greenhouse, it mm-hmm. makes that easier to do. Um, so there are things, though, that grow from seed in the ground, mm-hmm. like your squash and your cucumbers. Um, they Melons. grow perfectly well. Okra. Melons. 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 Okay. Yeah. So one more question about the tomatoes. You had mentioned earlier about square foot gardening. Mm -hmm. Um, So how much space do you need for a tomato? Does it depend on the variety? Mm -hmm. It depends on the variety, but average is about four foot. Okay. Four foot around or square. square. Okay. All right. So I've seen or heard of people like growing tomatoes in a bucket. You can. It's so if you're, if, if you're not ready to like, you know, do a whole garden plot, but you just right. want to kind of test mm-hmm. out your skills and see. Yeah. So that- a big bucket would help, though. Yeah. Most, <laughs> most varieties, even the bush varieties, get fairly large and fairly heavy. Mm-hmm. And so 10 gallons is probably as small as I would suggest. You know, 20 is even better. Okay. <laughs> and there are some varieties that are cherry tomatoes that do well in a pot, like okay. Tumbling Tom, yeah. Sweet yeah. and Neat. Yeah. These, those are not as heavy. They're they're really small. They're, they're really small cherry mm-hmm. tomatoes. And they're, and they're small they plants. And the they plants, only get about two foot. Smaller. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Most really most well. tomato plants will get seven, eight foot tall. Oh, wow. They get really big. And so that's when you need the ca- the cages. That's why the, we use cages out there. Oh, when you guys the the mid lighter? 
Is that, am I yes. saying that right? Yes. You guys did mm-hmm. some uh, trials on that. How did we those did. turn out? Great, actually. Yeah. It was pretty amazing because we, we did vertical growing of tomatoes. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that people don't normally see. Uh, and you do a lot of trimming. You know, it takes a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. Um, but they did fabulous. And uh, volumes were, were quite good. Awesome. And they, we did some heirlooms, and they were really tasty, they too. Were. Oh, wow. <laughs> Typically okay. on tomatoes, um, I was going to say, as far as growing them vertically, it's, it, it's surprising because you get less tomatoes per plant, but you can put a lot more plants in a certain bed size. Yeah. So it, it actually ends up that you end up with more tomatoes than you would just going in the traditional method. Okay. So uh, we're going to have to take another little break, but when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about that, and then we're going to talk about some other kinds of things because there's more tomatoes. That, um, there are more vegetables than just tomatoes, right, even though that's the popular one. Um, so you are listening to the Extension, uh, the Extension Hour where we talk about people, programs, and partnerships, and we've got our master gardeners talking about vegetables. Um, we will be right back after this. to need us. All of us. You're going to need our help with your water, your air, your food. You're going to need our determination, our compassion. You're going to need the next generation of leaders to face the challenges the future will bring. And we promise we'll be there when you need us. Today, 4-H is growing the next generation of leaders. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. Statistics show that one out of every six Texans struggles with food insecurity and hunger. And many people don't eat enough fruits and vegetables every day. The Better Living for Texans program is here to help you learn how to make healthy menu choices, save money at the grocery store, prepare quick and delicious meals, get more good nutrition in your day, and get more physical activity. Classes are fun, friendly, interactive, and free, and taught in English and Spanish. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and youth, and family and consumer sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. And we are back with the Extension Hour. I'm Amy Ressler, County Extension Agent for Family and Community Health. We uh, talk about people programs, partnerships. We've got master gardeners here. Uh, so people and programs, I got to talk about what's happening with agriculture. So uh, Brandon Gregson was on the show a, a few weeks ago. He kind of introduced himself and some of the things that are um, happening. And so he is keeping really busy. Um, just had a, a great program um, just the other night. And I've just gone blank on what it was. But uh, he does, uh, so uh, April 2nd has a private pesticide applicator training coming up. And then um, what I was thinking about that kind of got me off track is he was, he said one of the questions that he got most, like the first week he was in the office, and actually even before he got into the office, um, April was saying, I just hope Brandon comes in because we get all these these um, pond questions. So lots, lots of questions about ponds, and it might have just been the time of year, but um, there's actually a pond management program that will be coming up, and that will be on April 25th. And again, that will be at the extension office. That'll be in the evening um, at 6 p.m. They're in the Tom Leroy Education Building, but um, all about pond management. And then for the horse people, there's a freeze branding clinic for equine. 
that will happen in May. And that is, um, again, at the, no, that one's at the fairgrounds, actually. So May 21st, 5 to 7 p.m. at the fairgrounds. And then um, another important thing, you know, hurricanes are something that we worry about around here because they, it's not when, it's not if another one is coming, it's when it's coming. So um, being prepared for those kinds of things is really important. Um, and so, of course, Brandon works with animals a lot. Um, and he is working with the um, sheriff's department, um, the emergency management office, and they're putting together a workshop called Weathering the Storm with Your Animals. Um, so it's helping people kind of plan ahead on what they can do with their animals before um, or a storm happens or, you know, another hurricane. Um, so that will be on May 30th, and that will also be at the extension office. Um, they're still working out the exact times on that. It'll be a daytime workshop. But, um, again, really important information about, you know, what do you do preparing for a storm? So we talked about uh, preparing so preparing for storms, yes, but also preparing preparing for erratic weather, which we this this – this season, for some reason, I mean, I guess it, maybe it's like that often, but it does seem like this year has been um, hot and cold and, or, you know, warm and cold. And uh, it's been colder a little longer than um, maybe in past years. So you were saying it's taken a little bit um, of time to maybe to get some of the plants in the ground that you normally would. But, Mary, you were saying in the break, you you, you live on the edge. You, you took a risk, right? And you went ahead and planted some um, tomatoes. Well, yes. yes, I planted a bed of tomatoes last Wednesday mm -hmm. at the extension. Um, and we do have interns, like Linda was telling you, that come on Wednesday. Uh -huh. And we also like to train them. And I had some tomato plants that really needed to go in the ground. Mm -hmm. They'd gotten too big, and they were starting to get tall, and they really need to be planted. So, so they'd gotten too big in the, the greenhouse? In the greenhouse, okay. yes. So you took and them to put them in, the, in that hole in that ground. The <laughs> hole in the ground, yes. And... And because we grow our own plants from seed, we have a lot of extra plants. Okay. So I took the opportunity to teach um, the interns that were out in the garden on Wednesday the proper way to plant the tomatoes, okay. which we did one horizontally like Lynn was talking, and then we did the rest of them vertically and planted them very deep. So it was only about a third of the plant at the top that was showing that was above the soil. And we caged them, and we wrapped them, and we stake them with Tea steaks. Oh, tea steaks. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very violent. <laughs> uh, well, just to protect the plants. Right, we, right. we get a lot of wind uh, this time of year, mm. so it protects them from the wind and the cold, and it also prevents a barrier from insects as well. And when we planted, we also put an organic fertilizer called cottonseed meal in the hole to give them a little bit of a boost, uh -huh. uh, just, you know, not to burn the roots since it's organic. It doesn't burn the roots or harm the plant, but gives them a little bit of extra oomph there to get going. Uh, and because we have backup plants, if we did get some uh, bad weather or one of them died, we have extra plants in our greenhouse that I could just replace them if I needed to. So how, how did they fare in this? Last well, they've only feet? been in the ground two days. Oh, okay. So, so, so a <laughs> little, little too hard to tell yet. Okay. Uh, and they do get uh, watered through an irrigation system. So it's real important, too, that your plants uh, have a constant water, not too much. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes don't like to sit in water, but they do like to stay moist. So that's also very important. Okay. All right. So talked a lot about tomatoes. Is there anything else we want to talk about tomatoes and what we wanted to do with those? Because there's lots of other vegetables too, right? Like <laughs> there is. The t tomato may there be are. the queen, but <laughs> there's, <laughs> the there's other things. Um, so at the plant sale, we're going to have peppers, eggplants. You said one variety of cucumber. I was teasing you earlier about that one cucumber. So it's more than one cucumber. It's just one variety. Whereas Right. Would, you, would you say 25 different varieties of tomatoes? Uh, 14. Or, 14 okay. of tomatoes. We'll have 18 varieties of peppers, both sweet and hot. Okay. We've got five varieties of eggplant and four varieties of squash and one cucumber variety. And the advantage to coming to the plant sale to buy these is that the three peas in the pot are there to answer questions, right? We are. Right. So they can say, how do, you know, oh, I really love eggplant, but I can't make this grow. What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. So, Linda, what are some things that you would tell people, I mean, eggplant or anything? Um, what, what is your favorite vegetable? Well, I'm really fond of eggplant. Okay. And not Good. a lot of people are fond of eggplant, but I wanted to tell everybody that one of the things that we have that's kind of unique to our extension office is we're going to have what's called a L.A. green eggplant it's okay. for Louisiana, Louisiana green. And it actually has a thinner skin than the regular purple eggplants. And it's really, really tasty. It's easy to grow uh, after the weather warms up a little. I wouldn't put it in the ground for another two weeks or, or more. Okay. 
but uh, makes a really pretty plant and um, but very, very productive with fruit. In addition, we also have uh, the, the uh, long uh, L.A., what are they called, ping tong and <laughs> Japanese <laughs> long eggplants, and okay. also with some little tiny ones that, if you are into container gardening, there's one called a patio baby that would be uh, ideal for putting in a pot. It only gets to about two feet tall. Okay. So are there any, like, tricks to growing eggplants? Is there something that you need to really think about? I think one of the things that that most people probably don't do, and I think even a lot of us are bad about it at home, Mm -hmm. is uh, fertilizing. And it's really important to get these plants off to a good start. They need to get their roots going and start putting on leaves right away. So it's important to feed them. Um, I would probably start feeding them every two weeks after they uh, are in the ground. Okay, so how do you feed them? Oh, <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah. here you go. Here you Have go. Spoon. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Miracle Grow works really good. There's a special one for tomatoes. You can also, if you have a lot of gardening space, you can side, you can do a side dressing of like a lawn fertilizer, a 10, 10, 10, a balanced fertilizer like that. But you have to water that in really carefully. Keep it away from the roots and the stem because it'll burn the stems. Mm. That's why a liquid fertilizer is, is safe and easy for for a lot of consumers. Okay. And then Mary, did you say tomatoes are your favorite or do you have another favorite? Uh, tomatoes and squash. Oh, I have another favorite. Okay. Squash. Squash. Tell us about squash. Oh. <laughs> well, squash is does best when you direct seed it. And one thing that's really important is the temperature of the soil needs to be warm enough. So I typically don't plant squash until the very end of March or in April. So that you're sure that it's warm. Right. Okay. Because the seeds will just sit there in the ground, and they won't germinate and come up until the ground is warm enough. But direct seeding is the best. You just make a, a small little hill, plant three or four seeds, and keep it well watered. And if it's warm enough, it'll come up right away. And those get pretty They big, get pretty big, big right? Mm-hmm. And they take up a lot of space. So we were talking about uh, you need 10 to 20 feet for tomatoes. How much do you need for squash? Well, it does depend on the type of plant because okay. there are vining squash and then there are squash that stay compact in a bush. But they all get rather large. So, I mean, one squash plant, you may even need, what, four to six feet. So it's important for, that you know what variety you have. So which right. one takes up the most space? Well, a vining squash would take up more space because if, if you can't grow it up, mm-hmm. it's just going to keep growing out along the ground. But it goes somewhere. most <laughs> Most people do like the yellow crooked neck or zucchini squash, and a lot of those are grown in more of a bush-type plant. So, I mean, you would need four, five, six feet just for maybe one plant. Okay. All right. And then uh, cucumbers, that's another one that's popular. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have, we have a, uh, we're not selling it at the plant sale. The straight aid is, is just a regular uh, eating cucumber, uh, but we have, some Japanese varieties that are called Japanese long, and, and those are really terrific tasting. They almost taste like the English cucumber. They don't have as many seeds, and they're uh, real crisp. Uh, so if you can find those kind of varieties, those are, those are really good. But they take a lot of space, too. Okay. Uh, typically, you, if you have the space to grow them vertically, that's much better because it doesn't take as much room. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you don't, you just let them crawl, and, and uh, they, could, they can take you know, six foot or more. So we had talked about the tomatoes and the mitt lighter, and that's, um, it, it, is it like kind of a square cage sort of thing? I mean, how would you describe no, that? No, actually, mitt, the mitt lighter program we did uh, for both cucumbers, squash, so uh, we, even, we even did peppers and okay. eggplant vertically. Okay. And it's a method of trimming the plant on the bottom underneath where it blooms, Um and, and then training it to go up a baler's twine, which is a, a twine that's loosely woven. It's usually found at a feed store, mm-hmm. but it doesn't cut into the stem of the plant, and that's why it's so good. And you train it to go up, go up the vine and, and keep trimming it so it doesn't, you know, go out too far. Um, it's a little intensive when you're, when you're trimming all the time, yeah. but it makes the fruit better and bigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, as Linda mentioned earlier, you get a little less fruit, but it's, they're they're larger. They're Some more larger. volume, yeah. Yeah. So, but you, like you said, it's a lot of work. So it's not necessarily something that you would recommend to. Well, yeah, you can't just plant time. it and let it grow. <laughs> you know, yeah. you have to tend okay. to it. So, what can you plant and just let it grow if you're not good at growing things, but you want to have? 
vegetables. <laughs> How do you, what do you, well, what you everything has to be fertilized. I think that's the thing we all learned if we didn't learn anything else mm-hmm. a Master Gardener is, is unlike some floral plants that you might buy uh, that doesn't require a lot of fertilizer, tomatoes and peppers and eggplants, all of those grow in a short period of time, 60, 60 to 90 days and the whole cycle's finished. So you've got to fertilize it regularly during its growing, growing time. Uh, so you just can't walk away, and you have to have a lot of sun. You you need at least eight hours of sun. So when you're deciding where you're going to plant it, it needs to be a place that has a, an adequate amount of sunlight, right? Right. And soil right. is in another important issue. Yeah. You need a good sandy loam with a lot of compost in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of plants do not like clay, and most of Montgomery County has a lot of clay. So yeah. you need to amend your soil. Okay, so how do you figure that out? How do you know if you've got good soil or not? Well, you can tell by digging into the ground and putting the soil in your hand Mm -hmm. and squeezing it. And then if you let go and if the soil all clings to itself, you've got a lot of clay. If it's loose, it will just start to fall apart. That means you'll have a lot of sand. Okay. And that's what you want. You want to have a nice mix. And if you want sand. And you can take it to the extension Mm -hmm. and they'll do a soil test. That's uh, that's right. At A&M. Okay. Great. Yep. Yep. So, uh, and you can also call... But we have a phone room where we've got uh, volunteers um, 8 to 12 and 1 to 5, Monday through Friday, um, available to answer your questions like on the spot, which I think yeah. is another really cool. You can program. walk in, you can mm-hmm. phone us, yep. or you can email us. Mm-hmm. A lot of people bring in a disease leave or something like that. <laughs> yeah. We'll put it under the microscope and see if we can't help those people. Yeah, well, what is wrong with my plant? Exactly. <laughs> and, and then, like you said, the soil testing, and too, then, so that you know what to do with it. This year is going to be tough because it's been so wet over the winter months. Mm-hmm. And from what I'm seeing, the spring is going to be just as wet. Uh, so we're going to get a lot of diseases, especially on vegetables. Tomatoes and squash are notorious for having every disease that exists to man. And so yeah, we will, I'm sure, see a lot of people bringing plants in, saying, why is it not doing well? Well, it's probably going to contract something just because of the dampness. Okay. So um, we're going to have to take another break, but when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about that and then some kind of last thoughts for people that are listening that are thinking about um, growing vegetables at home. Um, But we will be back. Before we leave, though, I want to mention uh, we're available for playback on Facebook Live, also on YouTube. You can subscribe on YouTube, on iTunes, on Google Play, and then you get the extension hour every time it comes up so that you can come back and listen. Um, But also live right here, 104.5 and 106.1 and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. We'll be right back. Life Extension Service is all about extending knowledge and providing solutions. We do that by using science-based information to create high quality and relevant education for the people of Texas. More importantly, this outstanding education is delivered locally, right here in our county. We encourage lasting and effective change that helps our communities and our county thrive. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. Path to the Plate is a research-based education program that helps consumers understand how their food choices impact their health by making the connection to agriculture. Learning about how food is grown and produced and how consumers can make better food choices for themselves and their families, Path to the Plate is all about dispelling myths and misconceptions. Find out more online at pathtotheplate.tamu.edu. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. Hispanic Chamber Connections with Dr. Carlos Sanchez, president of the Woodlands Conroe Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, featuring event announcements, member highlights, and more. Tuesdays at 1 p.m., broadcasting from the heart of Conroe, Texas, on IRLoneStar.com, in Conroe's FM 104.5, 
106.1. And we are back. We are having some really great conversation about uh, vegetables and growing vegetables. And we're almost running out of time. So we've got a few last things that we want to mention. Um, so next week on the show, we're going to have Ed Dolphin. He is an arborist. He also does some tree service. And um, he's also a, a committee member on uh, the Family and Community Health um, Committee. So he's going to be our guest. And then the week after that, Mike Lopez and Ruby Chandler are going to be here. And we're going to talk about Walk Across Texas. But we are going to have you guys back because there's so much more to talk about. Um, so we, but before we went to the break, we were talking about um, diseases and uh, that plants get. And sometimes they, a lot of water and standing in water. And if we have a really wet season then they're more susceptible to getting those diseases. But Linda, you were mentioning that raised beds is a really good way to prevent that. So let's talk a little bit about raised beds. Yeah, we uh, we always recommend raised beds here in Texas, especially down here in Houston where we get so much rain. Uh, the roots will uh, will rot, actually, if they're if you try and plant them in, in clay or uh, directly in the ground a lot of times. So for drainage purposes and also just to control your soil texture and everything, it's good to have a raised bed. Um, and by raised, some of our beds are cinder blocks. Mm -hmm. It can be just as simple as, uh, as putting cinder blocks and then filling it with soil or, uh, with landscape timbers or treated wood or, you know, there's lots of ways to have a raised bed, but I think that's really, really important. And it's something we recommend on, on everything that's planted, especially vegetables. So is there an ideal height for your raised bed? I mean, how, how far up, how, how, how raised does it need to be? Of course, the more <laughs> raised it is, the more soil you need to buy to fill it. Yeah. I would and think and at least that can well, be expensive. At least 12 inches, I would think. Okay. Yeah. 12 to 18 inches. Yeah. And it also helps to be uh, easier to, to groom your plants and, and check on them and everything, too. And we were talking about the type of soil and filling the raised bed with soil, obviously, because if you're going to raise it, you've got to put stuff in it. So do you have recommendations for what kind of soil to purchase? Generally, it'd be a combination of soils, like you would buy a, a sandy loam soil and then also some compost, put in there maybe some humus or something. It, it kind of depends on the texture of, of whatever you're using as your base. And by the base, I'm talking about the, the sandy loam sold as um, garden soil, I think, a lot of times. And they, I think that they sell like a vegetable blend. Some nursery. Does that, is that? Good? Yeah, right. some dirt yards and nurseries will sell a certain soils for, for depending on what you're growing could be vegetables. It could be flower bed mix. And uh, the reputable nurseries will ask you what you're growing okay. and recommend which soil they carry. And you can ask them what's in it and have them tell you. You know how much sand or compost or manure or peat, even green sand may be in there too. And then you can call the master gardeners and say, hey, is this going to work mm -hmm. for me? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> or when you're at the plant sale. Or a talk tomorrow that we're having. There you go. Mm -hmm. So um, the talk tomorrow is Saturday, March 9th, um, honing in on your vegetable bounty and uh, making your vegetables grow. I didn't say that right, but uh, 8 o'clock, no, 8.30 to 10.30? 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, no, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 to 10. 8 o'clock to 10. 10.30 10 to, to 12.30. 12.30, okay. So, and you can just show up to that. Um, and uh, will all of you be here? I will be there. Okay. So, um, no. and it just, I, I want to say again, who we're talking to, so Lynn Shaw, Linda Blanke, and uh, Mary Decker, and they are all Master Gardeners, have lots of great information. Um, so, Mary, your favorite is squash, tomato squash, mm. maybe? There's no. a fine line there. Yeah. Probably tomatoes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Linda, your favorite is eggplant. I really like eggplant. Yep. Lynn, did you say what your favorite is? I'm a Tom Leroy prodigy, okay? <laughs> I love tomatoes. Okay. I love tomatoes that taste good. And I eat tomatoes, <laughs> Okay, unlike Tom. <laughs> Tom is funny, isn't he? So we're talking about Tom Leroy. He was a horticulture agent there in Montgomery County for several years. and Wrote books on tomatoes. So, yeah. you know, I, I learned everything from him. But he doesn't yeah. like But them, he doesn't huh? like tomatoes. He just can grow them. Yep. Well. But I do. Good. <laughs> All right. So last tips. Anything. If, if you had, like, one thing to leave our listeners with, what would you tell them? Make sure you're feeding your vegetables. It's important. Mm -hmm. Fertilizing. Feed ourselves. Okay. We need to feed our food that we grow. Okay. Yeah. And it's grow. important to go out and check your beds on a regular basis. Uh, if you go out every day and check them, you'll be right on top of it. If there's insects or something, you can treat it right away before it gets to be a big problem. Okay. Yeah. And grow stuff you like to eat. Yeah. You know? uh, <laughs> and have your kids help you. Then oh, they will yes. like vegetables. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, and I also mentioned, too, I mean, we have you guys back sometime, too, and also talk about the Junior Master Gardener Program, because getting kids involved is really helpful, and, 
and then from a health aspect, you know, that we we uh, work on, um, you know, kids that are involved in growing them are usually more willing to try them. Um, and what we mentioned earlier, that's one of the things that you can do to be healthier. All right, so there's so much to talk about, not enough time. But you are listening to The Extension Hour. I'm Amy Ressler. Thank you, Mary, Linda, and Lynn. And uh, we'll be back next week. See you then. Thanks for checking out this show on Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. This show is owned and produced by Lone Star Community Radio and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. For more information about this show, to be a guest or to sponsor, just contact the studio at 936-647-3776 to leave a message or email us at lscrstudios at gmail.com.